Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have done it. We are on the last tea time of 2022. Who knew, right? 58 tea times later, and here we are. Tonight, I am joined with the incredible Freddie Cruz. That's right. We're going to talk podcasting, copywriting, all of that good stuff, and of course, his book, Allow Me to Ruin Christmas. What the way and end a tea time, right? I want to ruin your Christmas. That's right. So we're going to do all of that good stuff and we're going to sit down and we're going to have a good old conversation. And we do have Freddie, who is a voiceover. So maybe we'll get some voices in here as well. So I'm going to do the disclaimer and all that good stuff, a little intro of his bio. And then we're going to sit. We're going to sit and serve a good, strong cup of tea and finish up 2022 strong and hard. And then we're going to be back on the 22nd with a double reunion show. Yep. And you just never know who's coming back for that. So stay tuned for that. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's live shows. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the contact brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogue and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, at my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I welcome you. And should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect that wish as well, and I will see you in 2023. So let me get Freddy Cruz in here, and I'm going to do just a quick little bio of him, and then we're going to sit back. And we're going to serve a good, strong, a TEA tonight. So let me grab Freddie. And I'm going to get Freddie to introduce himself. And if I miss anything, then I'll pop it in. So welcome, Freddie. Why, hello there. It is, it is. It is awesome to have you here in the studio with me tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an honor to be the final one for 2022. It's an honor. So thank Right? You. A whole year has gone by. It's been an incredible year. So, Freddie, if you'd like to share a little bit on who you are and all that, and if you miss anything, then I'll just throw it in there after. All right. Yes, my name is Freddie Cruz. I'm the founder of Freddie Cruz Creative Works, which is on sharing the stories of individuals and emerging brands in businesses through the written work and podcasting, video production. I do some voice narration as well. I like to write stories. So being a novelist is not what pays the bills. Uh, the production pays the bills. But I like to in um, all things creativity. So whether it's podcasting or writing, um, I like to do it. But I'm okay behind the I'm okay on camera. I'm okay with the word. I'm just doing people hear my voice or read my word. I uh, enjoy themselves as much, if not more. And Ra and Freddie, you're coming in like a little in and out. So we're we're doing like a little bit of robot voice over here <laughs> with the podcasting. So Freddie, uh, I, it might just be the internet setting and all that as well. But you're you're. I just want everyone to know that tonight's tea time is the last one for 2022. So please be sure to check out all the 2022 guests. Uh, I'm gonna just do a little quick intro of your bio. Freddie, and then uh, we can yeah. sit and we can share some more on all that good stuff. So Freddie works, spans 26 years, three three with the ironic KDWB, Minneapolis, there goes my tongue, St. Paul's, and 21 
with the legendary two-time Macaron Award-winning KRBE Houston forms, copywriting, and voiceovers to audio productions and big picture ideals. He is a quad quadral threat a thread you want to help to elevate your brand. And I want to talk to you about branding, Freddie, tonight. Yes. The the Greater Houston area has heard Freddie's voice for more than 17,000 hours via weekend shows, community affairs shows, and podcasts. And he has elevated world-class brands by means of over 58,000 hours worth of production elements and traditional ads. Boy, oh boy, I got a lot that I want to ask you tonight. When he's not in the lab creating auditorial satisfaction, you can find himself find him in a nose deep in a book, snuggling with his dog Sparrow, or jogging on the trails, trying to trying hard to not sound like a horror movie villain. And I think your your book has a lot to do with villain. Just the title, Allow Me to Ruin Your Christmas. So <laughs> I'm Where just do you like, want to start? Right. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like I'm going to take everybody's Christmas spirit away by. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm just that. I'm just that kind of lady that I just want to give that little twist at the end of the year. So. So let's talk about the book and then we'll get into all the other good stuff. Sure. Yeah. Well, allow me to ruin your Christmas was uh, not the original title of the book. Uh, it was going to be something like he ruined our Christmas. And I was I was about that, and there may have been a couple of other ideas, and and uh, it came about during one of the episodes of my podcast where I was talking with um, a middle grade author of all of all of all people, middle someone who writes for children, um, who was asking me about my work and what I've got going on, and so she turned the tables on me. What what about you, Freddie? And so I mentioned the uh, the holiday mystery set here in Houston, Texas. And, um, and the title just sort of came out like that as that was the working title. I, I mentioned that and she was cracking up and seemed to like it. So I'm like, all right, I guess allow me to ruin your Christmas is it. So that's how that came about. But when I started writing the book, uh, last year, it was really more of, um, I guess it was more of a projection on my part, it was, um, you know, everyone likes to, to think of the holidays as this happy time where there's absolutely no drama and we're going to, we're going to live, we're going to liven everyone's moods. And when I first started writing the book, it was in July. So there was, um, if I'm not mistaken, one of the, one of the cable channels had a a sort of Christmas in July promotion where they were showing all the romance movies that we see now that we're inundated with. And so it was really kind of a, a proverbial spit in the face, if you will, of all the happy endings, the sweet romances that, you know, the, the, the audiences expect and they demand these happy endings. Of course, you want to put your characters through the ringer, but at the end, you know for certain that they're going to get their way. The, the woman is going to score her good guy. The good guy, no matter how flawed he is, he, he ends up with the one he's meant to end up with. And I said, no, to heck with all that. No, that's not real life. Let's create some characters who may be unsavory, and put them to the ringer. And why don't we? Why don't we have? Why don't we have readers decide for themselves who they're going to cheer for, but not who they're going to cheer for because they're rooting for them because they're good people. But whose demise are they going to be rooting for? And by the end of the story, by the end of the story, Miss Miss Liz, will you? Will you regret? Will you regret cheering for the wrong character? Oh, so we have a little bit of suspense and thriller at the end of the book. Yes, yes, and there's there's a there's a lot of that. I would say there's a lot of it uh, from the beginning. Just from there's a lot of conflict from chapter one, and and anybody who's written at least a, one or two books knows that you've got to have the juicy conflict. You've got to have that tension. Um, yeah, it, it's. It, it was it was a lot of fun exercising that that young and shadow uh, shadow work. So you like to be that little rebel? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, I think it brings a twist to Christmas, right? Because it's like you said, everybody expects this cheery, happy time. It's And it's not like that for everybody. You know, there are people that are struggling and and that. So I think we need that suspense. And we need that thriller of, you know, like you decide how you want your Christmas to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, and it's a break. For, it's a break from uh, it's a break from the monotony, so to speak. So we've got the the Christmas movies with uh, and there and there's a there may be a, a lot of projection on my part um, <laughs> with regards to uh, you know Gretchen Wieners who uh, Lacey Chabay I think is her real name, but Gretchen Wieners who was like pretty much the face of all the Hallmark movies. Uh, the name gets thrown around. Um, more than a few times during one of the chapters because there's some some stuff where there's a big there's a big character reveal during this particular chapter and so it's Gretchen Wieners is on TV with blah 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 and la 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 so without giving in too much because this is a big reveal but yeah it's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of hey it's so not how all you... oh go ahead go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, it's a lot of, uh, you know, it's not everything is, not everything is always going to be unicorns and rainbows. I love that you say that because I always say it. There's no wine and roses in this cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of whining, but there's no, there's no roses. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So, so Freddie, you've worked on the radio for a long time. What have you learned about yourself by being on all, all of the the stations? I would say, I would say that it's not as hard. I guess let me back up. I will say that I learned that being in front of people and working with people who I don't know, who I've met for the first time, and having an intense uh, interaction with them, whether it's through an interview or a contest giveaway or or presenting to a client or going on a client meeting. I think that <clears throat> I learned about myself that it's not that hard. It's really not that hard that you get over the hump and you put yourself in that situation and it's not that bad. And then you do it again and then it becomes a little simpler. You do it again and again and again and again and again and you exercise that muscle. And it gets easy. So, for example, uh, this year, I started running five miles wow. more than twice a week. And I've, I've made it. I've tried, I've tried to make an effort ever, ever since I heard on the Rich Roll podcast. There's a, a 100. I think he's a, about 100 years old. He, he's either at 100 or he's 100 or older. But he runs five miles three times a week. And when I heard him say that, I thought to myself, you know what, Freddie, you've got no excuses. You just got none. And I run as therapy uh, to clear the head because I'm so connected with the Internet and I'm in front of a computer. And even when I'm writing, I write my manuscripts longhand and I conceptualize ideas for, for work, my career work. Um, I write everything longhand, but still I'm sitting down, I'm sedentary. So running is my therapy and so i was already putting in the miles but when he said that he runs five miles at a time three times a week i'm like all right if i want longevity and i want to create and i want to have a huge body of work as a as a creative whether it's novels or podcasting or producing and helping people produce their own podcasts then this is what i need to do it begins with a healthy heart and a healthy mind. And I'm not perfect when it comes to dieting. And, you know, this is definitely something to that. If anyone gets inspired for some, for some odd reason, if somebody gets inspired by what I'm saying, check with your doctor and a professional before you do any, don't do anything stupid. Uh, so see your doctor first. Um, this is just what works for me. Uh, growing up playing football, it was uh, about that discipline. So I knew that or and I know that in order to have this long, this huge body of work that I've got to put in more miles because Michael Freeman did. That's his name. Uh, he did it. 
So I know what I got to do. So we have a question here uh, coming in from Twitter. Yeah. And they, they want to know what's the difference between radio broadcasting and podcasting? Mm. And I cannot take credit for this, but I heard for the first time, and I'll, I both know that it's a more intimate, podcasting is a more intimate setting. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's Miss Liz with Freddie and the listener is uh, has got that, that, uh, that hole-in-the-wall view, that bird's-eye view, so to speak. Um, so it's intimate. It's a pod. It's a little pod, right? Broadcasting is broad. It's huge. There's a huge audience with, and huge, and not that podcasting doesn't have a huge reach. It's just that broadcasting is all over the place, constantly. So you think of a, a radio tower, and it's broadcasting twenty four seven. You turn on the podcast. You turn on a, a radio broadcast. It could be whether you know top forty or news talk or whatever. And you catch something. Let's say Miss Liz is an AM, AM show talk host. You catch Miss Liz at seventeen after the hour in the middle of an interview or in the middle of a news or traffic report podcast. It's just listener Jane Doe, John Doe, hitting play on her on the latest episode with Freddie Cruz, and she doesn't miss a single second and so that would be the difference not only that you get a commercial free you can skip you can skip forward you can reverse back so if i said something that may have been interesting cool um you can rewind to say hey what did what did he say what did miss liz ask him you could rewind it so you don't have that convenience with with the broadcast and not only that a podcast can get so 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 specific. I mean, we can we can we can talk about Miss T's podcast where she's talking to writers and creatives. You can you can listen to a podcast. Uh, I've, I've been researching for uh, for a partner of mine, a business partner of mine, funeral podcasts. And Ooh. believe it or not, there are more than twenty of those. And if you wanted to listen to a podcast. Hosted by a funeral director, you can do that too. Wow. Now yeah. that, that blows my mind that there's even that many out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and here's something else. There are more than two million podcasts, um, depending on what study you read. I have seen upwards of three. Um, I tend to think that there's more than more, more like two million, but as far as active podcasts who are actually putting out episodes on a consistent basis it is in the neighborhood and this is depending on what study you read it's in the neighborhood of between 300 and 700,000 that are active so there are a whole bunch of episodes or a whole bunch of podcasts who for whatever reason they decide they don't want to do it anymore and most of the times and producers and creatives typically agree that they give up after 10 to 12 episodes because they haven't hit that Joe Rogan status where millions of people are downloading their episodes and they've got huge followings and um, it's no fault to them. Uh, it, it just, it takes, it takes a while to develop a, an audience and get over that hump and get over that self doubt and that fear that, you know, the fear that you're going to sound dumb or that you're not going to know what you're talking about or that the mic is going to sound bad. Or that the lighting on the camera, you know, we're streaming on, on, we're on StreamYard. You can see me and I can see you. The fear that the setting isn't, isn't right. Um, and there's a, there's a, a philosophy that you just do it. And I forget where I heard it, but you, you, the, the best time to start is when you're 80% ready. That when you're 80%, it's Jen Lieberman who said that you start when you're 80% ready. That way the 20% of 20% part of you that's not ready, you can just, you can not wing it, but you can course correct. So if you're 80% ready, you already know where you're going to go. You know what you want to do. You have a clear vision of what you'd like to accomplish. So just do it. And I would use, I would expand on that and use my, my own podcast as an example where at about a year ago, after I left radio, I thought that I 
find a job traditionally employed with either a large corporation or whoever doing something similar to what I was doing, whether it was hosting um, on the radio or TV or um, community or copywriting or whatever. I do a lot of things and I figured, well, I'm not going to have a job, even though it's a solid choice, but I'm not going to have a job and I need to keep myself occupied in between looking for jobs and filling out resumes and applications. So I decided to keep myself polished by hosting a podcast and maintaining the relationships with the PR firms that I have. And so I built a podcast from scratch and then about a few weeks in, I realized that, wow, the uh, social media algorithms are picking up video and they favor video. Well, golly, my room is not really visually, it's not really visually stunning. And I don't know how much I want to invest because I need to find a job. And the podcast is only going to be something that I'm going to do as a hobby. And after I got rejected about 50 plus times with 400 different applications, I decided to hire myself and go all in on the podcasting. So I, I got my room treated. Uh, my wall is, my background screen is blurred out, but you can't see, I got some really cool looking um, soundproof uh, panels and there's some stuff that you can't see uh, in my background also. But yeah, I have my room treated. So it looks a little more professional um and it sounds way better too the acoustics are much better i I got a a better mic and so i invested in all that and so that's going back to jen's point about starting when you're 80 percent ready the mic that i had was cool the setup you know wasn't terrible and if you were to go back and watch youtube clips from the beginning of the of 2022 you would see that my setup and the lighting was not all was not all that good and now it's better because I've figured things out as I went instead of just waiting to be 100% ready and wasting all that time just um, just rearing to go. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about push-ups. You can only watch so many YouTube tutorials about push-ups. You just need to do them. Yeah. Just do the, do the push-ups already. Right. And I'm glad that you brought that up, uh, Freddie, that, you know, the budget because – when you want to start something, right? There, there's like this big budget. You need top mic, top this, top that. Yeah. But if you just start with the little stuff and build your stuff up, you're actually showing growth within yourself and growth within your product. And, you know, when I first started, I had this little microphone and I was like, okay, I need a bigger one and I need a bigger one. Then I did the radio, then I needed this thing. And then I need, and I was like, okay, how much stuff do I actually need to have a good show besides just being myself? So yeah. for any of the viewers that are out there or that want to watch the replay later, you know, like, like Freddie said, just get started. Like we need to stop second guessing ourselves and just do it, you know, and be different, you know, bring something different to the uh, table. My cream oh, blank. I, I think you froze yeah. for a second there. Like, and, and this is what I mean. Like what, with podcasting and broadcasting and all of that good stuff, yeah. you have these glitches, right? And we have no control over these things because it's technology. We can't control when the internet goes out or when the, the, the sound goes out or stuff like that. Like we have little buttons that we can push, but you know, sometimes we just got to do that 80% and forget about the 20% that's in the back saying, Hey, you can't do this. And yeah, we can like, and that's why yeah. we're here tonight. And I so, want to say hey to Adam. He says hi, Miss Liz. And so I'm going to say hi to him, even though he's yeah. Hi, Adam Liz. is coming in. He is also a tea time guest. He's from the Mental Health Warriors. So amazing All man. Right. Check out check out the Mental Health Warriors. They have some good stuff and some amazing stuff on there as well. And I, I really appreciate Adam tuning in today. I, I tuned in this afternoon. I was speaking with them today. So this is what we need to do, right? We need to support each other. We need to connect with each other and collaborate and help each other. Give each other tips and tools. So, Freddie, what tips and tools do you have for the listeners out there about podcasting? Um, I would, I would, okay. So, I would expand because this is my, this is my jam. This is what I do. Uh, I'm a podcast host, and I produce podcasts for for clients. So, I would say that the number one cardinal rule of podcasting is 
once you decide to do it, you stick that decision and you go full throttle for one whole year. If you do weekly release, it's 52 episodes. That's it. 52, 52 days out of 365 in a year. If you're feeling extra brave and maybe a little extra daring, do my weekly. My podcast is is two a week and on occasion three a week. Um, when I'm feeling a little, you know, extra productive. But one a week is good. If you're and I, I hate saying amateur, but if you're getting started, you you are gonna be an amateur. So one, commit to the choice for one full year. You know, we're coming up at the end of 2022. January 15th. So you get that's 50 episodes, right? 50 episodes. You can do that. 50 out of 365 days. Um, stick with it and don't give up. Find an accountability buddy, whether it's Miss Liz, or if you want to reach out to me, if you just slide into my DMs on Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. Someone that'll hold your feet to the fire. Okay, so that's one. Don't stop. Stay committed. You don't want to be one of these has-beens that puts out 10 episodes and then, oh, my poor little feelings. No one's listening. No one's going to listen. No one's going to listen to you for the, for, for the, at the beginning. You're just into an empty forest. You got to give yourself permission to suck. Yep. You have to. I, I came from a career. I mean, you know, Liz, you, you read out how many thousands of hours I, I produced and, and spoke on terrestrial radio. And I've got less than a thousand listeners per episode. Starting all over, starting from scratch. You got to give yourself permission to do that. So stick with it. Number two, number two, and this builds off of what you were saying, Miss Liz. Don't worry about the budget. Um, you do have to pay for something like a, a StreamYard, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't use StreamYard. I use Riverside.fm. But, you know, Zoom is free. Zoom is free. You have to find a website host. I use Omni Studios. My membership is $29.99 a month, so say $30 a month. 30 times 12 is what? $360 right there over the course of a year. So add about 100 for a, a decent mic. You do want your mic to be Maybe you don't have 100 bucks. Use the built-in mic on your phone. You're already paying for your wireless plan, so use it. So if you don't have a hundred bucks that you want to spend uh, spare for a mic, you can get a good, decent USB mic. In fact, my uh, my mentor, the guy who taught me how to produce on Pro Tools, he to this day will talk about a USB. Um, bl- I think it was a bl- mic. He talks about the USB mic that he bought for one of his clients that still sounds broadcast quality. And, and if you knew him, WBC, I love you. He is the biggest snob when it comes to audio setups, acoustics in the studio. He's got a whisper room of his own. And so for someone like for someone like him to say that, yeah, you can get a really good quality UV mic, 50 bucks, that's, that's something. So... You got to count on you got to count on the hard costs. Uh, and for a year, you can't verify. On, um, talking to YouTube, you already have you got a new address of Google account. Record yourself on your phone, and there are ways that you can do this for minimal, minimal cost. Did you give me a checklist? I think you I think you went robot style again there on me, Freddie. How now? Am I okay now? <laughs> you were clear for a bit and then you went all robot, but I you're you're clear now. 
Okay. Yeah. So I was just going to say, don't, again, just don't, price does not have to be a barrier to your podcast goals. Well, and that's it, right? When you're trying something new, you have to be willing to invest in yourself as well. You know, you can't yeah. invest. You can't expect everyone just to say, oh, my goodness, it's Miss Liz. Let's just let's just listen, listen, listen. Who is Miss Liz? Build your content, you know, really. And and like you said, Freddie, like the vision, have a vision and stick to it. I, 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 well, I listen to a lot of podcasts and they're they start off with this vision and then they're over here with a different vision. And I'm like, oh, OK. Did you change your show? Is your show still the same? What's going on with your show? You know, so we really have to stick to it. And I like that you say one year. Give yourself one year. What's one year? You know? No, we know it. We go on to 2024. Go some of these episodes that you know, a whole year will spine if you stuck with it like, like Miss Liz and I are, are suggesting. You're going to be, wow, it was really that and easier these these episodes get the better you sound which is why it's so important you allow yourself to be terrible right you have to be willing to fail yeah oh yeah absolutely and you're not going to want to listen to your first interviews or your first segments uh if if you're going to be on our podcast, yeah. Oh, and the other, and the other thing I was going to say, you got to be very good. You to mention goals, which if you are in the education space, have, and let's say you're a second grade teacher and you want to do something regarding children's education. Be very specific to what you're doing because usually you wouldn't want to talk to someone like me. You don't want to talk with other teachers in your field or a counselor or maybe another principal or a children's author. I don't write children's books. So stay, stay very specific to what your vision is. The more specific it is, the easier it is to build um, to build your following. And same goes for trying to be a guest on, on people's podcasts. Um, Rogan's not going to want you on if you're a teacher or if you're a, you know, I'm, I hate to speak for because I really don't. I'm just saying that if you have a very, very niche uh, podcast, it might not serve his mass appeal podcast, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, and, and that's it, right? You have to stick to it. you got to stick to the vision. And like I always tell everyone, you go out for dinner and you spend a hundred dollars. Go do it out that dinner and invest that hundred dollars in equipment. You know, yeah. sacrifice. Make some sacrifices for what you want to do in life. Yeah. Well, what is, I've I've heard this one before. <laughs> this is going to sound so dorky. Uh, what what I what I hit a valley and I'm feeling a little a little down and things get dark and the sky is falling. I have on my phone this uh, um, an Apple Music subscription. They're not paying me to say this, uh, but I have the Fearless Motivation on my playlist, and so I listen to a lot of these kind of you know, it's just a bunch of coach sounding guys yelling into your ear with this intense sounding kind of epic music, and um, one of the guys says. That if you don't sacrifice for what you want now, what you want will be the sacrifice later. And that really hit me. And there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. Hundred dollar dinner? Are you gonna when 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 little Timmy or when Timmy the college kid or Tim the the second third grade teacher or Jenny, the high school principal, is um, on the deathbed? When they're in their 80s, are they going to remember the $100 dinner? Or are they going to remember the podcast or the book that they should have created and wish that they, they took Ms. Liz's advice? Yeah, because I, that's what I, I like steak. I like steak. <laughs> I do I'm too. I like ribs. <laughs> I'm a rib yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> 
but we have to make sacrifices in order to make a difference in life, right? We and we yeah. can't keep it, keep putting it on everyone. And us saying, "Well, no one's listening. No one's listening." You'd be surprised who's listening, because that's the thing with podcasts. A lot of people will listen. They won't download, but they'll listen, and then they'll reach out and they'll say, "Hey, I heard your podcast. It's so cool." Da, da, da. How, how did you come about it? You know, and have a glit and like a, a niche. Like for me, it's tea. I serve tea, you know. So what do you serve, Freddie? My podcast, when people ask me what it's about, I do the comp. So when, as a writer, people ask you what the comp is. Well, when America Fell Silent is Hunger Games meets The Purge. Um, the comp for my podcast is TEDx meets Masterclass. So these are high-performing individuals. They could be entrepreneurs. They could be CEOs. They could be best-selling authors. I've had special operators, special forces operators like Brad Taylor, who now writes best-selling books. Jack Carr is the mastermind behind the James Reese series. He's a, he's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, his, his, his James Reese, the first book in the James Reese series, Terminal List, was made into an Amazon series. Um, so I've had them on uh, season two. I've talked with uh, Daniela Mestinick Young, who is a sex cult. I talked to Tova Friedman, who is an Auschwitz survivor. In fact, she's one of the youngest survivors of the Holocaust. Um, I've talked to. Whew, I've got Evan Carmichael is rounding up on um, December twenty ninth. He's a, a serial entrepreneur with uh, a YouTube following of over 3 million people. So it's, uh, I don't want to say hundred five, but there's an underlying theme uh, with all of my guests. Is they all overcame some sort of insurmountable obstacle. You know, they, they were, they run themselves to the gauntlet of life or they got in some cases were they they got them ended up without any choice of their own you know in the case of the survivors you know through no choice of their own they overcame the odds certain death in some cases and they came out on top so that's that's the underlying theme So, Freddie, if I ask you what your tea is, what tea would you be serving us tonight on Tea Time? I would say tenacity. I would say tenacity. I would say everything. And by everything, I mean 100,000%. We're talking about giving it one year for podcasting. Give it everything you got. And then I would say ambition. You got to want it. You got to want to do it. Don't do it because everybody's doing it. Don't do it because there are 2 million podcasts. Do it because you really want to do it because you really have something to say. Because there's something unique about you that makes you different. Absolutely. And that's a strong tea that you're serving tonight. And I love the word tenacity. Because when I first heard that word tenacity, I was like, oh, my God, somebody's insulting me. Like, what does that word mean? <laughs> <laughs> so for the listeners out there, they don't know what tenacity is. What is tenacity, Freddie? It's grit. Tough it out. I love that you, you know? put that. Yeah. Marcus Luttrell, another uh, former Navy SEAL, he, he, he says it. In, in, it's been a while since I've listened to his podcast. But in the intro, he says, suck it up, buttercup. Suck it up. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. That's what the seals say. You know, there's there's always going to be somebody with fewer resources than us who realized that they've got one life. That they were chosen by their creator and without getting to, you know, out there, you know, they're, they realized that their creator who or whatever that is, put them on this earth at this moment to do something. And they realized their purpose. And they're doing it. And they're seizing that moment. One life. 
you know the um the uh the stoics marcus aurelius you know he says memento marie you got to die you have to die it's going to happen again not getting i don't i don't want to get dark but yeah. when you realize that your time is coming we none of us know no none of us know our expiration dates so what are we going to do are we just going to sit around waiting for the 100 percent the moment that we're 100 percent ready to do that thing to take that dare to to dare ourselves to to dare ourselves to do something different than we've ever done in our lives like how how lucky are we that you and i can sit here and and have a talk with each other about the importance of of being of 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 having tenacity and being able to give a hundred thousand percent in what we do and having the ambition to to take that step to take those bold first steps that what we're doing was not even possible a hundred years ago there wasn't even uh, tv right and now look at where we are we're like right. we're all over like two yeah. million of these guys so if you're getting one listener out of two million people know that you matter that you're making a difference you know we really need to stop looking at the numbers because a lot of people are like oh well what's your numbers what's your numbers never mind what the numbers are how about you check out the content how about you check out the guests check out what they're really talking about and forget about the numbers oh they got a million listeners they got the how about they got one listener that's changing their lives because of that podcast that day absolutely and <laughs> You know, Naval Ravikant is, uh, he's one of my favorite, he's one of my favorite thinkers. Uh, he's at Naval. So like Naval, like a Naval base, but he, his name is Naval. Um, he once said that at first men worshiped gods, then they worshiped men. And in the 21st century men worship data. And there's a lot of truth to what you said. It's the data, the data, you know, the, uh, the stats, the impressions, the likes, the comments, the shares, the tweets, the posts, the reposts. How about you do it and doing it and sticking with it year after year after year is the success. And I go back to Edgar Allan Poe. And he died in his early 40s, which hurts. I'm 47. So this dude died years, you know, he was several years younger than me when he died. I think he was 43 or 44. And he only made $200 off of his writing over the course of his entire career. Wow. And not even 100 years later. He's got literary societies and awards named, named after him. He's required reading. He's a horror gothic legend. And so when, when you look, when you really think about what it is you want to accomplish while, you, while your earthly body is here, think about it. Are you going to be a, are you going to, are you going to make yourself, are you going to turn yourself into a surf? to the data and to the opinions of people who could, they couldn't be bothered to care about what you're doing, or are you going to create something that outlives you? You know, this Miss T Miss Liz, Miss Liz is going to outlive all of us. The data is not going anywhere. I don't know if you know, there's a huge NSA database in Utah. You got to Google it. It's huge. This is this is the internet's forever, right? This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, your family, generations after you, like how cool it be? Unless you're stuck on the revolution, you know, descendants, and you can actually trace your bloodline to these people. Like, what are the odds that you and I can can go back and and learn who were not just who are great grandparents who are our great 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 grandparents well guess what in a hundred years people are going to know miss miss liz and people are going to know that oh wow so you mean to tell me that a hundred years ago 
I have I have somebody who I have there's somebody in my family who who wrote books and had podcasts and helped people create theirs, and I can watch him. Like how cool would that be? That's legacy. That's that's creating something bigger than yourself. That's having a purpose. Right? And that's what I think a lot of people are losing the purpose of life. You know? Yeah. Think of think of the generations that are way, way ahead. They will say, My great great grandma did this, my great great grandfather did this, you know? And oh, this is why I do this today. This is why I'm interested in this, because of my great great grandfather or my great grandmother. You know what I mean? So there's a legacy that's being left behind with these podcasts. There's so much more being left behind with all of these millions of podcasts out there. You know, that might be the new way of finding family is through podcasting history. You know, uh, like you said, Freddie. I never thought of it that way. And you're 1000 percent correct. Um, and I know I, I kind of kind of probably maybe in a weird way bagged on people who gave up on their podcast after 10 to 12 episodes, but you know what? At least they did it. At least they've got, at least they got from zero to one. They took the first step. And so they took 10 or 12 steps and decided, nah, it's not for me. But it could but, be like, a, it could be like a job, right? Freddie, like you try a job and you're like, ah, oh, give me 90 days to like this job. <laughs> I don't like this job. Let me go to another job. So yeah. what you're doing is put, with podcasts and you're just testing the waters. Ah, uh, it's not my cup of tea. Let yeah. me move on, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just think that if you want growth and if you're doing it and, and you want to try and, and if you want to try and have this as part of your professional portfolio, then yeah, it's going to take, it's going to take far more episodes than 10 to 12. And, and what's great is that I think people, um, people are wising up to that. Uh, there are expectations are starting to be managed of podcasts spring up during the pandemic. I guess people getting bored and wanting something to do on the TV. They've got to work from home, so they're not sitting in traffic. So that's an hour, hour and a half. God, if you're in a huge city, maybe even two hours out of the day that you're home and they don't want to watch TV all day or they don't want to fart around on TikTok. They want yeah. to create something. More power to them. They took that plunge. They decided to do it. And then it's like, eh, eh. So, Freddie, you mentioned TikTok. I did find you on TikTok. So what do you think oh. about TikTok? <laughs> I'm not as consistent as I should be. Um, but I think... Uh, as with any other social media network, it, it can be used for good. It can be used for bad. It's simply a tool. It's, um, yeah, I, um, I don't know that I want to continue on it anymore. Um, it's just, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit much to try and maintain all of the platforms. Um, and yeah, it's just, um, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to eventually get to where I can have a, a VA or somebody manage my social media accounts. But in the meantime, I'm cool with doing it on my own. So I'll just probably scale back. Yeah. I find TikTok, I have to be in the mood for it. And then when yeah. I get on it, I'm like, okay, what else is everybody else having? And I'm like, oh shoot, I'm supposed to put content too. Like, oh, oh yeah. this is how this works. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and people uh, I've been on it, I think, points. two years, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I gotta put something. I have to put something. <laughs> yeah, people will say that you should be posting if you want to create a following, that you should be posting two times a day. And your videos should be formats where they are vertical. And so they are, are native to the actual platform. So what we'll say is you can't cheat. Don't post a square that you would do for LinkedIn. Make sure it's vertical. Don't do a widescreen that you would do for YouTube. You got you to gotta make it to where it's, it's for each individual uh, work. Yeah. I find it's a lot, right? I've like gone social media, like all the different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. They all have their own different guidelines and different structures that it's like, oh, it's, it's so tiring sometimes. It's like, can you just all just share one post? I don't have to create 10 posts. Like, you yeah. know, because you have to play with all the alignments, all of the sizing, all that. And I'm just like, can you just please just 
one post. Yeah. Keep it easy. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and what people and what people will tell you, and I've listened to plenty of them, so I feel like I I feel like I know a little bit about. I don't want to say I know about proper execution. I'm just saying that the key to developing an audience is to post every day, and depending on the platform, post twice a day. I was just reading something from Hootsuite, which is a scheduling platform. Uh, they talk about Instagram, and I know that you and I have communicated on Instagram. They recommend that if you want to grow an audience, and so this is from, from their website, so I'm not just making things up. They recommend for Insta, one post feed and two stories every day oh. to generate a following. So that's essentially three posts a day. That's a lot. Yeah. And for LinkedIn, um, there was a study that actually came out about two or three weeks ago. And it said every 18 hours, which is strange that the algorithms are timed like that. So 18 hours from where we're hitting, um, you're, you're hitting eight o'clock. So 18 hours from eight would be your next post. And then 18 hours from that next post. And if we eventually we're posting in the middle of the night, which doesn't make sense to me, but that's the way the LinkedIn algorithms work. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like my cup will flow when it flows. And if it gets seen, it gets seen. I'm just like, I, there's so much of the social media that, you know, this one has to be done this way. This one has to be this. Yeah. You know what? Mr. is just going to put the post up and if it gets seen, it gets seen. And if it doesn't, it wasn't meant to be. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have to get seen. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'll, I will add something. And this is for anybody who's podcasting or who, who maybe they've, they've heard uh, Liz and I talk on this episode about podcasting or inspired to do it um, in the coming year. I would, I would tell you something else that I've learned uh, from a podcast group that I'm a part of. And it's something called targeted daily engagement. And this is from Grow the Show. Kevin Schmidlin is the host. It is one of his things that he calls his clients on as TDE, targeted daily engagement. And he says that TDE for 15 minutes every day will get you will get you a follow-up. And it's not Okay, so let's say let's do this, don't do this. and I am starting from scratch. I see Miss Liz post something about Philip Fricasi, who's one of your previous guests. What Freddie will do is go to one of the commenters. Adam was commenting on episode, so we'll use him as as an example. Adam posts, Miss Liz, I loved your episode with Philip Fricasi. Uh, I'm a big fan of horror. I don't know if you really are, Adam. Sorry if you're not. Uh, I'm a big fan of horror, and I'm going to go and buy all of Phil's books. Fan for life. Hashtag horror. What Phil should do is, yeah, I love that episode too. In fact, my favorite part was where he talked about how he once wrote children's books. What do you think? So you kind of pose a question, kind of have a conversation and creating that, that sense of community. What you don't do is this. Freddie doesn't do. Oh, yeah. Philip is the man. Hey, by the way, I'm going to have Philip on my podcast, too. And then give a link to the podcast. You don't do that. <laughs> so that's not targeted daily engagement. And when you think about it, is it engaged? It's not really. You're just shamelessly plugging on somebody else's thread. It's supposed to be about Ms. Liz's episode. And then Adam was kind enough to engage with her content. And now you have somebody basically doing the, the doing the equivalent of slapping a flyer on um, Ms. Liz and Ms. and Adam's windshield. That, and that makes sense, Freddie. You know, like we need to be supporting each other, different podcasts, but we don't come on and we say, hey, check out my show. I'm going to have that person too, you know? Like my yeah. guests are open for everyone out there, just so everyone knows. But come and tune in to Miss Liz first before you kind of come in and take my guests. 
Like we're going to play nice in the playground or we're not playing nice at all. Like, you know, or it's going to be a horror story coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, Freddie, before we wrap up your tea time, and we're almost done for the whole season of 2022, which I can't believe I've done it. I did it. This is three years. 174 guests have come to tea time. And nice. next and next year, Miss Liz is tripling that. I am doing 156 shows, which are booked and confirmed already. So you have to really work it. You have to be ready for the next year. You have to keep booming. You have to go, 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 go. And encourage yourself push yourself so freddie what final words do you have for the listeners out there tonight before we wrap up the show and i know freddie will be joining us for the reunion show so you'll see more freddie there so there's a lot of good things coming for miss liz but freddie what final words do you have for all the listeners tonight i would just say that if you don't create every day you cannot call yourself a creative and that doesn't mean writing a thousand words for a novel or recording a podcast. That could simply mean creating a journal entry. So create and be humble with you being the only one in the stadium cheering for you. And that one, that last bit of the body uh, as well. Because somebody who spent more than half of his life with two gargantuan radio stations monstrous brands within the industry to go from that to saying nope, I'm walking away I'm walking away before it's not fun anymore to be, to be able to leave on top and start all over you've got to be comfortable with nobody cheering for you because there will be times when you're, no, one, no one's cheering for you you're going to be walking like I said, shouting in the forest. And you're creating when you're alone. So get used to an audience of one. You got to be your biggest fan. And I love that you say that, Freddie, because that's what I do with this tea is one person at a time one cup at a time one guest at a time we really have to start looking at the number one as the magic number and starting with number one believing in ourselves and believing in what we're serving to the world so freddie i really want to thank you for joining me tonight and sharing your incredible story of you know allow me to ruin christmas well i guess i think we ruined christmas a little bit in a different way and for all those viewers and listeners that have tuned in tonight, I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all of the listeners all year for 2022. You guys truly make the difference. By just one person tuning in, you make a difference. So don't look at the numbers. Look at the content. Look at the guests. Look at what they've come through and what they've overcome. Because we all have a story. We all make a difference. And when we start serving strong teas, we actually make a strong pot for humanity. And we make a difference for our brothers and sisters around the nations and all the nations that are not part of nations because there are some countries that are not part of the nation. So I just want to put that out there. We didn't forget you. You are a part of us. This is a world community. Miss Liz's pl platform is for everyone. So you come, you serve your tea, and you make a difference. And that's how we make a difference. So, Freddie, I know that you'll be joining us for the reunion show. I don't know if you're coming in the afternoon or evening. You're welcome to both. I'd love to see everybody. And I want to thank everybody for an incredible 2022. You guys have made a difference in my life by just coming and sitting and sharing your tea. So, Freddie, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Tea Time. Thank you to the viewers. Thank you to the listeners. And I will see everybody on December 22nd in the afternoon and in the evening where I am bringing guests back from year one, two, and three. And then there'll be some surprises for year four that are coming up. 
So you want to really join in and you want to tune in. And if you'd like to support Miss Liz, donations are always welcome. They're not needed, but they are welcome. And I want to thank you all for sitting and having tea with me in 2022. So thank you, Freddie. And I will see you next week. For reunion. Thank you. I'll see you next week.